Hello and welcome to the next Worlds 2022 Finals Preview video where we're going to look back at mid lane and their matchups they had throughout Season 12. Down in the description you'll see three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships, Twitter follow me there, Discord join us. We talk about the games and uh, league in general and then uh, YouTube membership $3 a month keeps the channel alive. $10 a month keeps the channel alive, you get extra content, um, mainly NFL American football content a couple times a week while the season's going on. Um, regular season at least and then um, league content there's only one more prediction left uh, I've been doing my predictions on there for the last few months um, so if the finals prediction is worth that much to you um, that will be there now um, let me move this mic a bit um, so the last couple days we've went over this matchup but obviously the mid lane matchup is the one everybody wants to talk about um, Zekka's really stepped it up at this event um, in a big way. I had him middle of the road going in only um, due to lack of experience against the, you know, a, a gauntlet of mid laners, right? Going to be against Knight in group stage and um, Zhao Hu in, um, in, in uh, play-in. So, you know, middle of the road and in the end, He's shown up in a big way. He's taking the next step. In the LCK, I did have him as one of my um, all-pro teams. I had three first, second, third all-pro teams, and he was in there. Um, his laning is very, very good, and he has I ran into my board there, bumped it. Um, he's shown the ability to do that at Worlds on the biggest stage, really taken over games on the Silas, Akali, Azir, and even the Ari at one point last week. Um, Faker, known commodity, greatest of all time. Um, you know, he stepped it up in this event, definitely looking like Faker of old at times as a Kali. His decision-making um, has been stout. So in spring, um, a lot of weird matchups. Uh, in their four games, obviously T1 went 8-0 against DRX. That is kind of irrelevant. Gen G did the same thing, and you saw what happened to them. Um, Faker played Trindamir, Corky, Vex, and Vigar. For a total of 24, 2, and 22. 24. 24, 2, and 24 in spring against DRX. Talk about dominant, right? Um, just absolutely crushed it. All sorts of different champions. I mean, Trindamir is very different than a Corky. Corky is very different than a Vex, and a Vex and a Vigar are different. I mean, how often? We're really not going to see these champions this weekend. I mean, I really, really, really doubt we see those champions. So it's not quite even, I mean, it's not very relevant, but it's nice to look back at. Um, in three of the four games, he was down in farm at the end of the game. Um, never really dealt a ton of damage. He probably had primary damage numbers in the Corky game at 28.9, but 21.3 on Vigar, 19.7 on Vex. Both of those are not carry damage numbers. He definitely, despite going 8-0 and 6 on Vigar, was not the key damage producer on um, T1 in game two of the second round Robin. Um, Zekka, he went Corky, Vex, Ari, Rise. So Corky into the Trindamir, Vex into the Corky, Ari, Vex, and um, Rise, Vigar. He would go 7, 7, and 16. So not bad. 7, 7, and 16. That's a lot better than what Kingen did. And also about what Pioshik did. You know, he didn't. He wasn't really hurting the team all that much in spring. Was he winning it for them? No. You see Faker absolutely dominating it. KDA only means so much. But Zekka um, on the rise only dealt 12% of the team's damage in that one. That's pretty bad. That's like support level. So the rise, I hope I don't see that again. Um, but the Corky game, he dealt 40% of damage, which are the type of numbers that we saw out of him in summer that he would just go off at times. And um, he's carried that forward through through the world's event in the mid damn it in the middle here we have um how the matchup looked at 15 minutes this is the end of laning phase right the 1v1 if you will of course there's some jungle intervention which we get into in the summer section but zeka on average throughout the games i mean all the games overall hit a plus 38 cs per minute so um a slight cs lead but it's mixed here at first in the trindamir game Faker is ahead, 1,900 gold, 1,275 XP. I mean, he was dominating in golden XP, not in farm, but you know that's due to Rift Herald's objectives and things of that nature. Um, Zekka's best game in spring would be game two of that series on the Vex into the Corky, had a nearly 1,000 gold lead, 
32 CS and 1500 XP. So he dominated Faker in that matchup at um, the end of laning phase. Jungle intervention could have been a reason why, but 32 CS at 15 minutes is a massive, massive gap. Um, I understand quirky scales, but to be down 32 CS at 15 minutes is just mind-blowing. The next two games were rather close. Um, you know, 300 gold either way. Faker, slight couple CS here and there. And uh, XP is, uh, you know, 366 and 253. So, games one and game two a lot more close in their first um matchup but the second round robin it got closer so you see zeka gets better by the game gets better by the round robin there against faker getting more used to playing against a great player zeka coming from the lpl um into spring now when we look at summer it's very different which we'll get into but you see a lot of blue here that's because faker at 15 minutes faker was not very good at laning into zeka throughout summer um he would go corky swain seraphine azir so we had a Seraphine in there. We don't, I don't expect to see a Seraphine this weekend. But the last matchup was Azir into Akali. I think that one does matter. I think that matchup is something to look at um, because we may see that matchup this weekend. Maybe more than once, maybe opposite sides, you know, both sides of the matchup. It is very, very possible. These are two champions in the um, S and A tier in mid lane at Worlds. Um, <coughs> between the four games, Faker went 13, 6, and um, 29. So not quite as dominant as he was in spring, but still dominant. 13, 6, and 29 is still a thing. Um, he led in farm in only one game, which was the Azir Kali game. Worth noting, 45 CS ahead at the end. Um, in the Swain game, he was down 58, which is sizable. Um, took on more of a support role in that one with only 17% of damage. Um, you know, didn't do much in laning phase. Uh, Faker's Azir game, the last one that we keep talking about, it was his highest damage output at 35%. Um, looking closer at these games, so I looked, I did not rewatch the spring games because I the champion uh, compositions and things like that aren't nearly the same, so it's not worth really putting too much salt into it. Plus, honestly, DRX are totally different than they were in summer. Um, just a lot better. And T1 as well, because the meta has shifted in topside causing a ripple effect through the team but um as far as watching summer goes uh drx would spend a little bit of time going to mid twice in two games in the corky game and the azir game they would take two trips um ganking roaming trying to affect the matchup you know that did help in the first time around the last time around not so much um which we'll get into now zeka into um faker would play ari into the corky victor into swain azir seraphine and akali azir so um you know we see an akali and azir and ari we see an ari up there ari is a champion that zeka likes to play it was kind of weird seeing him pick it in worlds he hadn't done it all worlds and um looking back at it now it is a legitimate pick for him it is something he doesn't mind playing in summer, he went 7, 8, and 10. So 7, 8, and 10, once again, middle of the road. Um, not dominant by any means. But the Azir Akali game, he did go 5, 2, and 4, which does kind of, um, you know, not, doesn't match the 5, 1, and 7 by Faker. But 5, 2, and 4 is no slouch. He did his job. He dealt 21.5% of damage, which was definitely a lot less than Faker, which was 35%. But... He did do his job. Um, in the Victor game, dealt 39% of damage into that Swain. Um, he would lose, obviously. Um, and then 31.5 on Azir, 29.5 on Ari. So he's dealing his damage, dealing uh, primary, secondary damage numbers, doing his, his job. I can't emphasize that enough. He's doing what he's supposed to do. Um, when we look at... Um, the matchups individually and how the teams handled them and how they transpired. Um, like I said, Faker got hit twice for in game one of the first round robin and the second game of the second round robin. Um, T1 would go to mid twice um, against Zeka, both times in the first round robin. They did not make 
a, a big effort in the second round robin to go there in either game. So in this Azira Kali game, Pioshik would go mid twice. Owner would not go mid at all. Owner went mid once in the Ari game and then twice in the Victor game. In the end, that didn't make a difference. Zeka is ahead at 15 minutes in those matchups. So despite getting harassed, still gets the job done. Um, and another thing to note in the Azira Kali game, which is probably why the farm is so, is so um, lopsided, in Faker's direction is because Zeka did roam. He would roam and dive bot lane. Faker not really roaming too much in these four games in the laning phase before 15 minutes. Um, and we see the matchups are a lot closer, right? We went over how the second round Robin of Spring was closer. You know, 300, 300, a couple CS, 350 XP. Um, a little bit larger scale in Zeka's favor, but still kind of close. I mean, in the first round Robin of Summer, Zeka has a 545, I mean 550 pretty much gold lead, a 500 gold lead. You know, 16 and 11 CS, 700 XP, 450 XP. So it's, you know, a slight lead. It is a lead, but is it massive? I mean, I don't know. You just, it's noticeable, but it's it's not, you know, it's not the 30, it's not the quirky Vex game we see here where Zeka's had 30 CS, right? Um, in the second round, Robin, Seraphine and Azir, you expect um, the Azir to get ahead. Seraphine is more of a supportive champion. Um, but Zeka gets ahead 411, only a couple CS, 458 um, XP. So it's not a massive lead. It's a lead nonetheless. Um, lastly, the Azir Akali game, very close in gold. Um, Zeka only 180 lead. Um, probably in due part because he roamed, and I think he got the kill on the roam. Um, Faker punishing him, 21 CS lead, 500 XP lead because he's in lane. Um, I mean, you know, close matchups nonetheless, plus 4-3 for um, CS per minute in Zeka's favor. Um, is that massive? No. I mean, that's 7 CS on average at 15 minutes. Um, you know, 4.3 at 10 minutes. So you know, 16 over 40 games. Um, I mean, 40 minutes, sorry. Um, so it's a close matchup. Zek is playing better than he was in summer and spring, though. So that has to be taken into account. I feel like when we looked at Chovy and Zeka going into into quarters, Chovy is better than Zeka. Chovy decided not to play the game the proper way and um, couldn't resist his uh, farming addiction to raise his farming numbers and cause his team to lose, which is a whole nother thing that we got into already. Don't need to harp on, but um, Zeka did perform a lot better in that series than he did in, in summer when he was stuck on the Talia and things like that into Gen G. Um, the Talia sucks, and it's good that he's not picking it. Um, you know, this matchup is going to be Silas, and Silas is probably going to be banned. So it's going to be Azir, Akali, back and forth, Ari, um, Lissandra for Faker. You know, those kind of champions are probably the ones that we're going to see. Um, I don't expect to see Vex or Corky or Swain, um, Seraphine, you know, stuff like that. I don't expect really, but the, the Victor, Akali, Azir, I mean, those three, Ari, four are going to be rotated this weekend. So thank you for watching this video. Um, if you liked it, like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a YouTube member. And thank you for watching. Oh, by the way, comment down below with your opinions. Make sure you include if you're a fan of one of these two teams because an opinion is an opinion. Everyone has the right to an opinion. Everybody has an opinion, but it's nice to know where it's coming from. So thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for more content.